Coakley Landfill? No. Okay. Uh, last week, I presented to the board a draft letter to the uh, Portsmouth City Council as one aspect of dealing with the situation of yeah. PFC contamination in the uh, Aquarian Wells uh, to express Hampton's concerns, uh, especially in follow-up to yep. uh, presentations that have been made uh, on the 15th to the Portsmouth City Council. Uh, Portsmouth City Council is going to be taking up the issue again on their meeting Absolutely. February 5th. They have several Everybody. new members, and it appears from all news reports that the City Council is taking quite seriously uh, the issues of the uh, use by the Coakley Landfill Group of a lobbyist. Um, most recently, uh, the uh, City Attorney testified against some legislation being proposed to make the Coakley Landfill Group subject to the right to no law. Uh, Portsmouth pays 54% uh, of the expenses of the Coakley Landfill Group. And so uh, it, with the board's suggestions, I have uh, amended the letter that was proposed before, and this would be a timely time to uh, to send such a letter if the board wishes. Yes, Mark, I think that the letter is excellent to go, but I wanted to add a couple things, if I may. I've been in heavy contact with uh, Representative Mindy Mesma this weekend, as you know, the lobbyist was actually targeted at the bill she's working on. And I wanted to read a couple things that she notes on the Coakley Landfill Group, Portsmouth City Council, the EPA letter that was sent to, uh, that was sent by the federal delegation, which she's thankful for, but uh, she felt that some of the facts are not fully understood and that the EPA is not being exactly forthright, that they need to be more data to act and that it will say will take up to two to five years. Now, I want to explain that Representative Mesmer is a hydrogeologist, and she brings a lot of uh, insight and knowledge that most representatives don't have. So I'm going to read a couple of emails, and then I also want to talk about a Portsmouth Herald article that was in the paper this weekend, and then I also want to summarize the bills that she's working on and how the Cookley Landfill Group and the Portsmouth City Council are trying to fight her in every which way possible to get those bills passed. <clears throat> so if you just listen to me for a few minutes, I'm going to give a little history, as she had given me this weekend. In 1994, a phased approach to remediation was proposed that would stop the flow of toxins from the site, I'm assuming this is the Coakley Landfill Group, that dump into surface water bodies and shallow bedrock that threatens water supplies of five towns. The plan proposed in 1994, including correcting what we know about already combined, with possible expansion once deep bedrock information was obtained. The deep bedrock work was never done in the 1990s, more than 20 years ago. The EPA does not need to wait for several years for the results of the deep bedrock investigation to do something about toxins flowing from this site. They can compel the CLG to start the phased approach right now. The Department of Defense gave the CLG $5 million in the mid-90s to put this pump and treat system in. CLG never put the system in, and the taxpayers of the City of Portsmouth, among other responsible parties, will be asked to pay the Department of Defense back when the site is closed, according to Attorney Sullivan. Where has that money gone, and what is it used for? There is no need to wait several years without action when we can stop at least some of the toxins flowing away now. The state has already stated in writing that contamination is unacceptable, and the community agrees. EPA needs to compel action now. And then she's saying she's happy to answer any questions that anyone in the Seacoast community would have. Best Mindy. Now, in regards to the Portsmouth Herald that was in the paper on January 27th, this is about Portsmouth City Count Attorney Robert Sullivan having appeared at the legislature to testify against the bill that seeks to make the Coakley Landfill Group, now going to call it CLG, subject to the right to know law. There is some significant case law from the New Hampshire Supreme Court that could be pointed out on this issue. Okay, so an important point that appears in this article, which is you bring it up in your letter that you're sending, and which is relevant to us sending the letter, is the council on February 5th, 2018, is again going to be asked to address the Coakley CLG and what it's doing with this money, 54% of which of it comes from the city of Portsmouth. Now, the CLG is considered a private party, but if 54% of it is a municipality, 
in my mind, that would make it a public entity. So I'm briefly going to describe the four bills that she has presented or will soon be presenting and what EPA, DES, and the City of Portsmouth pretty much via the CLG group is trying to prevent. So we have HB 1799. This bill is intended to provide private citizens with access to the state contract rate for perfluorinated chemical blood testing that would be made available to citizens. The bill was opposed by New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services and the Floral Council. This is an economic justice issue. After emotional comments from a Republican member of my committee whose husband is dying from pancreatic cancer, whose business is located in Merrimack, the bill was retained for interim study instead of yielding in to op the opposition to kill the bill. This she's going to work on again this summer. Another bill who she's co-sponsoring with Hampton Representative Rennie Cushing, HB 1701, was heard by the House Judiciary Committee last week. This bill would make the CLG subject to the provisions of RSA 91A, the right to know. The committee heard opposition from City of Portsmouth attorney Robert Sullivan and their hired lobbyist. <coughs> the lobbyist was hired by CLG, the group of responsible parties which received 63% funding from municipalities, specifically the city of Portsmouth. The sponsors believe this is a conflict of interest because the taxpayer money is being used to fund opposition to the very legislation meant to make transparent to the public efforts the thwart public health of the municipalities, protecting public health of the municipalities. The hearing resulted in a bipartisan support of our efforts to make activities of CLG transparent to the public. So this bill would require CLG to submit its records pertaining to the remediation of the site of the Copley Landfill Group. Another bill, HB 1591, was sponsored by Representative Mesmer. This would close the gap in our rules that would allow a private citizen to sue for exposure to toxins. This bill, much to the dismay of the House Judiciary Committee, myself and co-sponsors, was opposed by Mike Wimsat of New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, who claimed it would make it harder for them to negotiate with the polluters. And then HB 1766, which is on hold till late February, would require DES order parties responsible for dumping hazardous waste in Copley to undertake certain remedial actions. So these bills, which to me seem should be implemented immediately, are being fought every way direction, and they are trying to make Representative Mesmer not know what she's talking about, and I would argue that she knows the most out of anyone of what she's talking about. So I just wanted to add all that, and so that hopefully everyone at home will realize how important this letter that we have going out is. Rusty? All set, thanks. Rick? Phil? Yeah, I, I, I have to weigh in on that. And you say that uh, um, Representative Mesmer uh, is being thwarted by state agencies, our good friends at the state on uh, citizens' rights to engage in torts uh, to protect themselves. You see that on, on other issues, uh, the state weighs in, and I'm sure they didn't give her a heads up that they were going to testify against her. And it's a rough crowd up there, and people uh, talk about uh, not getting on the beach. Uh, and you two gentlemen have been up there. and. Uh, The CLG has gone rogue uh, many, many years ago. Uh, this, of course, was uh, where I was at the night there was a meeting down the beach. And um, you take your hits, you take your hits, you sign up for this stuff, so be it. The important issue is that uh, as a member of the Cancer Cluster Investigation Commission that uh, um, Mayor Spillane was there. And uh, he has taken up the clarion call, which I think has been led by Hampton in this board, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and uh, calling out that uh, obfuscation and that obstruction and that lack of transparency and that, uh, that lack of morality. And uh, when I spoke at that meeting uh, with Representative Mesmer, with many other women, uh, and Mayor, Mayor uh, former, former uh, Assistant Mayor Spillane spoke there, and then he took the time to go up to Concord. Uh, in his comments uh, that he blasts City Attorney Sullivan. Disgusting. Uh, Disgusting, and, and uh, he's a he's a hero to me. And uh, there were there were there were dead children. This is one of 300 cancer clusters in the nation, and this is in a, in our backyard. 
and uh, I think it's the most important issue facing Hampton. We have other important issues, uh, and that's why I attended that meeting and informed everybody. Uh, but um, we have a well shutdown, well number six. Two. We have two wells shut down, one specifically for this issue, uh, and it's a crisis, and uh, we're not getting any help, and uh, anything we can do uh, to bypass the CLG. Uh, it's a fool's game to talk to uh, a city attorney, Sullivan, and the CLG. Their own Portsmouth City Council uh, doesn't know where the money has gone, if you read the uh, former assistant mayor's comments. I couldn't imagine being a selectman in this town and spending millions of dollars a, 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 on a venture and to a third party, to another entity, to represent your interest in, in a situation that perhaps is causing young children their lives and then not know where the money is. And then to have legislation um, that's been brought up uh, and then have the same organization say, uh, we're not, we're, we're not going to be subject to the right to know where taxpayer money goes. And I, I can't get that insanity through my head, aside from the safety issue, aside from the fact that we have a well shut down. So I, 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 I just, I still can't get that through my head. And our, our discussions now have to be, I would, I would say, and I, and I am thankful for our esteemed uh, town esquire, is that we deal directly with the Portsmouth City Council. And Northampton is also a PRP, is that correct? That's correct. And we, we're done dealing with um, the charades and the, uh, the misogynistic practices of the CLG. That, that day is over. And, and I would say that anybody in Hampton that, that speaks with me on the street would agree with that. And I think uh, everybody at this board would. Uh, that Mr. Sullivan is not a master of the universe. He is a city attorney. This is a flawed practice. Minnie Messner um, has done great work. You have done great work. And so going up to this, this, uh, this effort up there, I'm interested in hearing what the town manager uh, has to say about this. I'm interested in, in Mark's perspective on the letter. But again, uh, I specifically in my remarks um, a few weeks ago or last week, whenever it was, said that we're tired of the obfuscation, we're tired of the obstruction. Uh, and quite frankly, we're tired of our, our well water being subjected to, to PFCs. And Portsmouth doesn't have any of these problems. And when the MBTE disbursement of funds came out, Portsmouth was right at the trough. And they received hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we got nothing. And again, um, it, it's a matter of common courtesy, and I spoke about this. If Hampton was a PRP, and Portsmouth had problems. I know darn well this board would be communicating directly. I know darn well the quality of the people and the leadership in this town would not assign this to a city attorney uh, to, to make up his own rules, and nobody's entitled to know where their money is. Okay? And they hire a lobbyist with their own money, not just Mindy Messmer, but the city and the people of Portsmouth. They're not entitled to, to know where their money is. And I don't know where Mr. Sullivan went to law school, but that's a really weird brand of law in the United States of America. Uh, and so um, as we all uh, face an election coming up, this is the most important issue in this town. There's other important issues. And some of people spoke about it in uh, public comment tonight in the wastewater treatment facility and the tort. But this is the most important issue. It's human life. It's human safety. And it's, it's our most vital natural resource besides oxygen. So uh, we can't say enough uh, uh, about how atrocious uh, the Portsmouth City Council has abdicated their responsibility. We can't say enough about how, how Northampton has abdicated their responsibility. Uh, and uh, you, you don't do that in America. You just don't do that in America. And, and we're not going to tolerate it. And so I wanted to, I wanted to back up um, Selectman Barnes in this course of action. I want to speak again to how important that issue is, and it dwarfs any other interest or any other people coming from meetings in the town, was this, this specific issue right here. And that's why you get such great press play in terms of front page news uh, in the city of Portsmouth when that Mr. Spillane, and I think he's a hero, uh, to, to carry that trumpet call and that clarion call for this nonsense to stop. And now I want to um, go back to you, Mr. Chairman. I want to hear what the town council has to say. Uh, well, I would say that it's important. Uh, we, we could make changes to this letter, but whatever we do with it, it's important to get it out to the City Council this week so that the members have it before their meeting on next Monday. Um, there are three new members of that City Council, and so they, I believe, are hearing it in spades, what's been going on. And 
I, I, I think it's, uh, it just has not been on their radar screen, and that's wrong. It should have been. Oh, but I now. I motion we send it. Good. I second it. All in favor? Um, I, I would say one other oh. item, though, if you don't mind. I think okay. it's important to have a presence at the next Monday night meeting of the City Council, just as Mr. Bean was there uh, last uh, on the 15th. Uh, because uh, that that's an important to reinforce what's said in this letter. I, I will be there as a member of the uh, commission, and I won't speak for the board, but I will speak uh, as a selectman, and I will speak as a uh, representative for the town of Hampton <laughs> and as a member of the uh, investigation, the Cancer Cluster Investigation Commission. Mr. Chairman. Okay, it's next Monday night? The 5th. So we've, and we, we took a vote, which was unanimous. Uh, I, did you? Yeah. No. Well, we'll do it again. Regina, you want to make your oh, motion? I made the motion. Oh, Regina, I second. Second it. All in favor? Opposed? Great, thank you. Okay, so that, that's that. All right. And I want.